name is Mallory Hopper. I'm the Children's Ministry Director at Herndon UMC, and I am so excited to welcome you to worship today. Whether you're joining us live or later, whether this is your first time checking out Herndon Worship, or if you've been hanging out with us for a long time, I'm so glad that this is where you chose to be today. And hey, now that you're here, if you do us a solid and hop in the comments, let us know who's watching from the other side of the camera. The comment section is where we get to know who you are, how you're doing, and how we can be in prayer for you. Today, Pastor Floor is getting us revved up with a new series all about spiritual disciplines, how we can be open to the different rhythms rhythms of God to center our souls. I'm really looking forward to this time together today, and I'd like to honor that by starting us off with a prayer. Will you pray with me? God, we are here and ready to receive whatever you have in store for us. I pray that you bless this time so that we may get to know more about who you are, how you love, and who we are becoming in your presence. And Lord God, in this time, may we be aware of your love that goes before us, walks beside us, lingers behind, and works through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Easter people, raise your voices, sounds of heaven earth should ring. Christ has brought us heaven's choices, heavenly music, let it ring. Alleluia, alleluia, Easter people, let us sing. Fear of death can no more stop us from oppressing here below, for our Lord and us to triumph over every foe. Alleluia, alleluia, on to victory now we go. Every day to is Easter with its resurrection song. When in trouble move the faster to our God who rights the wrong. Alleluia, alleluia, see Today, Pastor Floor is going to be talking about spiritual disciplines, which are just the different ways that we connect with God. It might sound super fancy, but really disciplines are just ordinary everyday ways that we listen and hear God more closely. They're part of this ancient religious tradition where people like you and me would often gather together or by themselves and meditate and reflect on their special text. And these are the things that many of us today still practice. So you might see somebody reading their Bible, you might see somebody praying, you might see folks getting together and having a meal and thinking about a different question related to their faith. These are all different ways that we connect with God and they're called spiritual disciplines. And what these disciplines do, they give us time to pause and catch our breath during our busy day 
to focus on God and, and, and growing our relationship with God. And one way that I like to think about spiritual disciplines is through music. If you have ever had to play an instrument or sung in a choir or done anything with any type of music, you know that you have to practice and rehearse in order to get better. You might try playing the scales. That wasn't a very good scale. I'm still working on it. Or you might practice your finger placements. And then the more you do it, the more you start to hear the notes a little bit more clearly. And the piece doesn't just sound like a bunch of notes. It actually sounds like music. And spiritual disciplines, they're the same way. They are different ways that we practice so that we might hear God a little more clearly. And the other cool thing about spiritual disciplines is that there are, there are so many to choose from. Some people find it prayerful to spend time outside in nature. Others like to read a couple of verses or passages from the Bible over and over and circle the words that stand out to them. Others may journal and write about their experiences and questions they have with God, while others may enjoy worshiping together with others as a way to connect with God. And no matter what, there's no wrong way to practice spiritual disciplines, and it's okay to play around and see what works for you and what doesn't. It's kind of like when you're listening to a song. Maybe you are getting ready for school, maybe you are driving with your parents to the grocery store, and your favorite song comes on, and you hear the chords, right? So it might sound something like this. And it sounds familiar, right? And you're like, oh yeah, I love this song. And it sounds really good, and you're just jamming. And then the next song comes on, but it sounds a little different. It might sound like this. And while the chords may sound different, the song is still really good. You're like, wow, that first song was a bop, the second song is a bop, I love all of these songs. And the really cool thing is that the same is for spiritual disciplines. You pick the different notes and chords that make the most sense for you, that sound really good to you, and your friend may pick something that sounds really good to them, and all of it is going to sound great and help us to connect with God with what makes sense for us. The other cool thing is that you can keep playing around and trying different spiritual disciplines until you find the one that you like and makes sense for you. There is no wrong way to practice the spiritual disciplines. So, for instance, you might say, you know what, this, uh, da, 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 let's see. So this might sound not really pleasing to you. We'll try it. just like it just doesn't fit very well so what if you tried something like this and that sounds better and so basically what spiritual disciplines do they just let us kind of play around and figure out what makes sense in what order the same way that artists and musicians try and figure out what chords sound right in the right order too and so I hope this week that you can find some time to think about some really cool and creative ways that you might connect with God. And so with that, I invite you to pray. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the disciplines. We thank you for all the different ways that we can connect with you and that we have the opportunity to um, explore and try out what works and what doesn't. God, we ask that you just illumine, uh, illumine and light the path of which ones make the most sense. Help us to um, hear you just a little bit more clearly in the midst of our busy day. God, we love you and we give you thanks for this day. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Bye, friends. Today's reading is from Matthew 4, 18 through 22 in the Common English Bible, calling the first disciples. As Jesus walked alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew throwing fishing nets into the sea because they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I will show you how to fish for people. Right away they left their nets and followed him. Continuing on, he saw another set of brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. 
they were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, repairing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, friends. My name is Flor, and I am one of the pastors serving our church family. This morning, we will begin a new series called Spring Training for the Heart, Mind, and Soul, where we are going to take a look at what spiritual practices are and how to weave them into our lives. I can say that I started preparing to deliver this message back in 2003. It's been a long journey and a journey that I will continue to embrace. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of you, for the gift of community, and for all the blessings that we have already received. Dear God, we ask you to please open our hearts, our minds, and our souls so we can receive your word this morning and we can live into it, into your teachings. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Throughout the entire Bible, we have read that people prayed, they abstained from food, they rested on the Sabbath, they read scripture, and so much more. Well, my friends, if you have been doing some of these things, then you have been practicing spiritual disciplines or practices. So my prayer life began way before 2003. It began when my mom and my dad taught me how to pray. They taught me who, Je who God was, who Jesus was, and how to be kind and gentle and considerate to others. But in 2003 is when I decided to make an intentional covenant with God to go spiritually. And you are going to think, well, Flood, you are a pastor. You're supposed to do that. Therefore, you have a spiritual life. Well, not really. <laughs> besides, back then, besides uh, praying when I needed help or uh, listening to scripture, being read during worship on Sunday mornings, my spiritual practices were pretty limited. Daily spiritual practices can begin to transform the way you think, the way you react to situations, the way you feel. Spiritual practices can also be healing. You will be able to, um, with the help of God, to begin to forgive yourself. And that is such a difficult thing to do. But if you're intentional, you will be able to learn to forgive yourself in order to forgive others. To understand yourself in order to understand others. There's so much healing in that. Jesus is calling us to leave our old ways and follow him, just like the disciples did. Peter and Andrew dropped their nets, and right away, the Bible says, they followed Jesus. Jesus was offering a different kind of fishing for them, a different kind of life. And we heard on verse 19, Come follow me, he said, and I will show you how to fish for people. And you're going to ask yourselves, what does this scripture have to do with spiritual practices, Flor? Well, Jesus is calling us to follow him. Jesus is calling us to go and live into his teaching so we can develop deep spiritual relationships, not just with our friends, but with everyone with every type of people, even the people we don't know, or even the people we don't like. And how do we do that? In the book, Celebration of Discipline, The Path to Spiritual Growth, Richard Foster helps us draft a pathway to this amazing journey. And this is the pathway I took to be able to really stay centered and begin my journey with uh with god and the in the spirit and jesus and these paths con consist of three journeys the journey inward the journey outward and the journey together or we call it also the corporate journey these three journeys 
will help us develop a different way of seeing and accepting ourselves. Of course, also accepting others. And truly, my friends, by accepting others, truly living a different kind of life with God. And how do these journeys look like, you may ask? Well, the inward journey is um, some of the things that we do in the inward journey are prayer, the awareness of God around us and within us, fasting, silence, scripture, reflective writing, rest or Sabbath, and sometimes we're so bad at this because there's always something to do. Breath prayer, which we have been doing already, and so much more. The journey outward is your life. Your journey outward is what you do every single day, which consists in your vocation, what you do at work, your living, what you do at home, prayer vigils, worship, service, all the missions that you are part of, all the circles and all the groups that you're part of. Conflict and reconciliation, and that is a tough one, but you know what? It is also a spiritual practice, and sometimes this conflict is an internal conflict, and we need to seek that reconciliation with ourselves through the Spirit of God. Once we do that, then we will be able to be able to fix whatever, um, you know, we broke or somebody else broke. I'm talking about relationships. And of course, the one thing that Jesus taught us to do since the very beginning of his life, living a life of simplicity. The journey together, that's the third journey. And that consists of contemplative storytelling with scripture, listening for God and others, and really listening, learning how to listen, not just hear words, but listen. Um, confession, celebration, discernment, which we already practice, and so many other practices that are available for us to embrace and to have. And let me tell you that living this daily way as a journey, it will help you. It will transform you. The journey inward, outward, and together is a gift that is given to us. And if we live into this intentional gift and we become more supportive in our community, we are going to be transformed. We're going to go through that process like a butterfly goes through. And you know that a butterfly, once it comes out of the cocoon, it won't go back. It can't. It's impossible. Well, the same. My friends, this transformation will happen to you the way it happened to me, the way it happened to so many others, because it's available for you to just say, yes, I want this in my life. The way Jesus wants me to live with compassion, with forgiveness, building relationships, deep spiritual relationships, not judging. And I, I can tell you that this is not uh, something magical. It takes time. And that is why we call this series Spring Training for the Mind, the Heart, and the Soul. Just like anything in life, we need to continue practicing so we can achieve the things that we want. And in this case, it's not, not going to be anything tangible, nothing that you can touch, but you will be able to see it, to feel it, and to live into it. And it is for you. And if you want to connect with me, uh, you may do so. And I can guide you. We are going to be offering opportunities. And one of them is the pray, no, the read, pray, ponder, pray. Sorry. Read, ponder, pray. Which is we read scripture, we ponder on uh, the scripture, and then we pray. And this comes every day. Um, it's a spiritual um, guide. It's a devotion for you to embrace. And it is going to be, for the next month, um, done with the spiritual practices. So I encourage you to really read it. It's in all our platforms. 
and embrace it. Sit with it. I have many places in my house where I just sit, I read, I quietly um, embrace the words that I read, and then I pray. It doesn't take long, but it takes practice. So I encourage you to continue joining us the rest of this series because it is going to be a powerful one. And I want you to take advantage of this opportunity that God has created for you. This is not about me. This is not about Pastor Jonathan or any of the staff members at the church. Anything different, anything weird, different it is, but not weird. It is an opportunity for you, my friend, to really leave your nets and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Floor, for that message and for telling us how the paths of spiritual growth can be as easy as remembering three things, growing inward, growing outward, and growing together. That reminds me so much of Hernan UMC's vision, to live the teachings of Jesus so that everyone may experience God's love and grow in spirit-filled relationships. Friends, I wanna let you know that we're entering into a time of worship where we can live into that vision with giving and prayer. If you've ever wondered what it looks like to give financially to the life of the church, there's some information that's popping up right now in the chat box. Please know that every bit of your generous giving is keeping the ministry and mission filled heart of Herndon UMC beating. Also during this time, I'd like to encourage us to be a people of prayer. We're about to step into a time where we can be still and open to how God is calling us to be present in and with our community. If there's a way that we can be praying for you, whether it's celebrating a joy with you or supporting you through a challenge or sharing a glory sighting, if you're willing to share that with us, please do so in the chat box. I hope that you'll join us as we encounter God in this time of prayer. Let's pray. Running 
Thank you for sharing your prayers with us and for taking a moment or two to be still and open to how God is speaking. I'd like to invite you to join your heart with mine as we share in a prayer to God and wrap it up with the Lord's Prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear God, today we are mindful of the ways you encourage us to align our lives with your heart, to take a deep dive into the places within, without, and around ourselves and hear where you are calling us to follow you. Lord, help us to be aware of your loving presence and to share your love with anyone and everyone. We ask this in the name of your son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy, worthy 
of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Well, friends, thank you so much for being part of today's worship gathering. It's been awesome to see all of your names and to know that you are there um, walking this journey with all of us because we do this in community. And before we close in prayer, I want to share with you that um, there are many resources out there for us to embrace, to use, and to learn from. Uh, and learning about this journey is so important because it really touches our souls and it helps see people in a different way, to uh, see the world in a different way. And eventually, uh, my prayer is that we can all live this life with God together using the spiritual practices that are available for us. And I um, love this book, The Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. And this book that I use a lot because through this book, I was able to begin my journey, my inward journey. And uh, we are going to be offering um, a book study and I will be leading it. So if you're interested, please register it. We will begin next Wednesday. Uh, this one coming up and we will meet in the evenings and then every Friday for seven weeks. So uh, Friday morning, I think it's from 9 to 1030 and Wednesdays from 7 to 830. And there we are going to begin with the inward journey um, through this book, 
we are going to learn about prayer, uh, solitude, and silence. In solitude, we find wisdom. Solitude is what Jesus did when he retrieved to be in prayer with God. And uh, it is a way to stay connected, not just with our friends and our community, but through God, through the Spirit. So I encourage you to, um, you know, join this group because it's going to be a powerful, transformational one. And I want you to please continue doing what you're doing because you, I know you're prayer warriors. I know you love to help. And that is a spiritual practice, the spiritual practice of service. So see, we are already doing so much. We just don't uh, know, or maybe we did not know how to call it, but it is a spiritual way of living. So would you please join me in prayer? So we can begin this week with an attitude of receiving the goodness of God and then giving it back to all the ones who need it. Let us pray. Dear God, I want to thank you for this time together. I want to thank you for the gift of you because you are an amazing God who wants the best for us because you are the one who created everything for us and everything is good. God, I ask you to please continue to be with my friends, with their families, and with people that they know, their friends and co-workers and everyone, God, so they may continue to touch lives, so they may continue to be your living and loving presence in the world. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, I seal this prayer. Amen. Go in peace, my friends, until we see each other again. Blessings. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.